Thank you for joining us for Sermons on Demand from Friendship Grace Brethren Church. We provide these videos as a way to share the pulpit messages and teachings offered at Friendship Grace Brethren Church. If you find these videos a helpful resource, please drop us a note at info at friendshipgracebrethren.com. Now open your Bibles and get ready to dig into the Word of God. Heavenly Father, you are an amazing Father. Our last worship song spoke about how good you are. Thank you for calling us your children. Thank you for creating us and keeping us. I pray these things in Jesus' name who's made all of this possible. Amen. Have you ever been on a guided tour? Ever been on vacation? Maybe caught a, a tour that was guided by a tour guide? Ever done something like that before? Now, some of you husbands in the room right now are probably thinking you would like to take your wives on a little tour yourself. You'd like to play tour guide. Maybe take them on a you know, guided tour of the kitchen. Or maybe not. Maybe you guys have some, some good cooks at home. I'm joking. That was a bad joke. Shouldn't it be making jokes like that, especially from the pulpit? Now, should I? Some of you wives maybe want to take your husbands on a guided tour of the laundry room, kitchen, bedrooms, bathrooms, living room, all while pushing a vacuum, gripping some Lysol, Windex, and a rag. So it goes both ways. And if you're like me, you need to make an appointment with the audiologist because uh, you're not really good at, at hearing what you need to do around the house, so... Maybe that comes before the guided tour, I'm not so sure. But speaking of guided tours, you guys ever heard about the net job who decided that he was going to hijack the tour bus occupied by a bunch of Japanese tourists? It didn't take him very long to find him. The police were on to him immediately because there were thousands of pictures of this guy right there on the spot. But seriously, just for a second here, when you're on a guided tour, think about it. When you're on a guided tour... Your tour guide is a treasure trove of information. If you've been on a tour, you understand that. A good guide will direct your travel combining both audio and visuals. Imagine if you're on a tour, but then you get separated from your tour guide. Imagine that. How many stimulating visuals and nuggets of information will you miss if you get separated from the tour and get separated from your tour guide? Like a guided tour, Christians are guided in life by a better than good guide. We're guided in our life by the incarnate, incarnate Jesus Christ. The title for today's sermon is this, the incarnate guide from Colossians chapter 2 verses 6 through 10. And, and the word incarnate there just simply means a deity in human form, a deity or a God in human form, or in this case, God, the only God in human form, the incarnate guide. What we'll be learning today from these verses is this. We're guided by our faith in Jesus Christ, who is God in human form. We're guided by our faith in Jesus Christ, who is God in human form. I want to ask two questions this morning as I'm turning to Colossians chapter 2 myself, the first question I want to ask from the text this morning is this, in life, what guides the Christian? In life, what guides the Christian? Or what is the Christian's guide? In life, what is the Christian's guide? Faith. And we see this from Colossians 2 verse 6, therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. In the medical field, a patient can receive treatment to combat a disease or disorder. Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, who is our treatment for our sinfulness. Jesus is recorded in Mark's gospel saying this, 
You don't need to turn there. I'll read it for you. This is what Jesus said in Mark's gospel. Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. See, it's those who know that they're sinful. Those are the ones who need Jesus, not those who don't know that they're sinful. If you're sinful, you know that you need Christ. If you don't know that you're sinful, there's no need in your life for Christ? Would you purposely in life disobey your doctor's orders? If your doctor told you that you needed to do this, this and this, would you purposely disobey your doctor? So why would you disobey your orders from the great physician? If we want to disobey our doctor's orders, why would we disobey the orders from Jesus? If you leave the doctor's office with a prescription, what do you do with it? You just hold on to it, file it away, and save it for a rainy day? No. If you leave your doctor's office with a prescription, you go immediately to the pharmacy and get that prescription filled. If we've received Jesus as the text is telling us right here, what's our prescription? We've clearly received, therefore, therefore, as you received Christ, what's our prescription? Our prescription is to walk in Him. Walking in Jesus is acknowledging that He goes before you. He goes before us. He is our tour guide. He is the one guiding us. Have you ever been on a guided tour? I'll ask that question again. Some of you are nodding your head yes. If you get ahead of your tour guide, then what's the point of being on the tour anyway? What's the point of being on a guided tour if you get in front of the tour guide? Jesus is our guide, and if we follow the pace he sets, we have nothing to worry about. If at any time you find yourself in your life unsure of what you should do, Pray for the faith to do what he is calling you to do. What he is calling you to do may not be comfortable or easy. But if he is truly our guide, if we truly allow Jesus Christ to be our guide, then anything is possible. He may be calling us to do something that we are completely uncomfortable doing. But if we find ourselves in a position like that and we're unsure, we can pray and ask for the faith because our faith in him is what guides us. He will give us the necessary faith to fulfill what he has called us to do. We're asking this question in life, what is the Christian's guide? In life, what is the Christian's guide? The Christian's guide is faith. Colossians Chapter 2, verse 7, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. If you're like me, when you hear the word establishment, you think of a business organization, a public institution, or a household. Legally speaking, an establishment is anything affixed to the ground for the foreseeable future on real property. That's what an establishment is. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith reveals that our permanent affixed structure should have a solid foundation so we can build upward. What do you believe a solid foundation is built upon? When you think of a structure that's solid, it should have a solid foundation. What do you think the Christian's life, what do you think in a Christian's life, if it's built strong, who is the foundation? Jesus. How do we get to know him then? If Jesus is our foundation, how do we get to know him? How can you get to know him in your life? One of the best ways to get to know Jesus is sound doctrine. To know what he's teaching us. 
If you don't know your Bible and know what your Bible teaches, then you're off the guided tour out ahead of the guide. And I don't know how many times in my life I've found myself in that situation, walking through a door, then asking for God's blessing, getting off the guided tour, not concerned with seeking Him first, not concerned with praying for the faith necessary to do what He's calling me to do, doing what I want to do, and then seeking His approval secondly. Our faith in Him trusts where He is guiding us. If our guide is our faith in Christ, then we're trusting. We're really trusting where He is guiding us. If you're rooted and built up in Him, established in the faith, what do you really have to be worried about anyway? If you know that you're standing upon this firm foundation, what do you really have to be worried about? And we have some people in our church who have some pretty big things that they could be worried about, but I've watched and have been encouraged because I know that their faith is in Jesus. They're going through some tough, hard times, some life and death type situations. And to watch them trust where the Lord is leading them, to watch them have faith is an encouragement Because I can look at this text and apply what I'm seeing and say to myself, what do I really have to be worried about? If I know that I'm rooted and built up and established in the faith, what do I have to be worried about? Those who recognize that their future is beyond foreseeable also understand that where he guides us often stretches us beyond our comfort zone. If you understand that your future is beyond the foreseeable, beyond what you can presently see in front of you, then you're okay being stretched beyond your comfort zone because of your faith. From this verse, how do we know that this is true? When we look at this verse and we make statements like that, how do we know that this is true? Do you see where it says right there, abounding in thanksgiving? Think about that. It says abounding in thanksgiving. See, thanksgiving is true contentment. To be truly content is to have thanksgiving. Paul reminds us to be abounding in thanksgiving because things may not go our way. No matter what we're going through, things may not go our way. But if they're not going our way, we can abound in thanksgiving. If you're joyful when things are going good and bad, we cannot easily be swayed. If we're disgruntled, we, we tend to position ourselves so we may hear whatever it is that we want to hear. We put ourselves in a position to hear what we want to, to hear. Why do we do that? As you'll see, discontentment is one of the enemy's favorite emotions to play on. So let's ask the second question from this text. What do false teachers deny? Now, we're we're keeping in mind that when we're disgruntled, we hear what we want to hear. We position ourselves. We align ourselves with people that are going to tell us what it is that we want to hear. So we ask the question, what do false teachers deny? False teachers deny Jesus' deity. Jesus' deity. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition, according to the element spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. What do you call a prisoner who takes their own mugshot? Does anybody know what you call a prisoner who takes their own mugshot? A selfie. Get it, right? Selfie? C-E-L-L? Man, I got to laugh at you guys. I came out the gate with no laugh, so I was starting to sweat a little bit. I'm not going to raise my hand. You guys will see. No, I'm joking. See to it that no one takes you captive, Paul writes. Indicates that there are teachers who want to imprison you. Their aim is to carry you away when we look at the original. The way this was originally written by Paul in the Greek, it's basically saying carry you away. But it can also mean to imprison you. 
How are they so successful at doing so? How is it that these teachers are so successful at imprisoning others? You would think that they would be pretty easy to spot. How are they so successful? See, they're successful because their teaching includes Christ only to get you to focus on yourself. If you're really focused on you, then Jesus isn't really God to you. So therefore, they've stripped Christ of his deity. If Jesus isn't your God, then who is? Well, you've made your God yourself, but really it's Satan because he's tricked you into focusing in on yourself. And we wonder why society is so obsessed with taking selfies, don't we? Tell them what their itching ears want to hear. I think Paul wrote that to Timothy, right? He warned Timothy about telling them what their itching ears want to hear. That he, he, he claimed, proclaimed, I should say, that there would come a time when that would become even more so. And what do we see today in society? About every picture that we see on social media, a high percentage is a selfie. How can we spot such teaching? How can we spot such teaching that's going to take us captive by philosophy and empty deceit? How do we spot such teaching? See, it's any teaching that promotes prosperity in this life now. How do we spot such teaching? How can you spot such teaching? Any teaching that uses Jesus to promote you. How can we spot such teaching? How can you prevent from being taken captive and carried away? How can you spot such teaching? Any teaching that doesn't remind you to find contentment despite your circumstance, whether good, bad, or in between. An example of such rubbish is this. And if you've noticed, the source's identity has been concealed. I'm not going to tell you who wrote this. It doesn't matter. But this is an example of being taken captain, captive by empty deceit. God would not have put a dream in your life. This is what this teacher, this false teacher writes. God would not have put a dream in your life if he hadn't already given you everything to fulfill it. See, that's using Christ to promote yourself. It sounds really good. It sounds really good. But the last time I checked, it's not about me having a dream. It's about me finding the faith to do what God is calling me to do. And I don't have to find it, and that's the beauty. God has given me faith. For it is by grace, it's a gift. He's given us the faith. And we need to tap into our faith in order to do what he's calling us to do. And it may not be pleasant. He may be asking you to do something that is going to take you out of your comfort zone. And that's okay. Because the faith is there for you to answer that call. So don't let this stuff, don't let this rubbish and this garbage infiltrate you and hold you captive, imprison you. Just because they mention God, just because they mention Jesus, doesn't mean that it's from the Bible. It doesn't mean that it's legitimate gospel truth. Don't let any false teacher attempt to strip Jesus of his deity by getting you to focus on you. Our next verse reminds us of this as we still ask the question, what do false teachers deny? False teachers deny Jesus' deity. Verse 9 from chapter 2 of Colossians, For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. When a sporting event is attended at full capacity, how is it described? When every seat has been sold in the stadium, how do we describe that event being attended? Sell out or standing room only. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. 
This tells us that God's deity was filled to capacity, standing room only in Jesus. Who is Jesus? That's the follow-up question. Who is Jesus? He's God. Jesus is 100% God, 100% man. Though Jesus was God, who did he rely on? And that's what's crazy to everybody else. Every other non-believer is going to say, well, okay, if you're telling me that Jesus is God, then who did he rely on? God. We see it in Scripture. In John chapter 5, verse 30, I can do nothing on my own, Jesus says. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is why we should allow God to be our guide. In confidence, tell yourself right now, mentally tell yourself, if it's good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for me. If Jesus allowed God to be his guide and Jesus was God or is God, it should be good enough for us, shouldn't it? Is God your guide? Are you allowing your faith in God to be your God or be your guide in this life? Because you know that your future is beyond foreseeable because of what your faith teaches you and tells you and gets you to trust in. What do false teachers deny? False teachers deny Jesus' deity. Our last verse this morning, verse 10. And you have been filled in him who is the head of all rule and authority. Is the glass half empty or half full? Is it half empty or half full? I mean, the entrepreneur would say it's undervalued for its potential. The fanatic would say it's completely full even if it wasn't full at all. The warrior or the anxiety-ridden individual would fret that the remaining liquid would evaporate before morning came. And you have been filled in him, Paul writes. See, this encourages us that we've been filled to the brim in Christ or with Christ. To the brim. God sees us as complete because we're in Christ. Do you recognize what the first half of this verse reveals to us? Are you seeing it? Are you, are you seeing what the first half of this verse reveals to us? This verse is telling us that there is nothing, nothing beyond Christ capable of providing complete fulfillment. Jesus Christ is it. It gets no better than him. This is why it's important that we do not allow false teachers to creep in and get us to focus on ourselves. No teaching that promotes prosperity now over future hope. We can't allow that. No teaching that uses Jesus to promote you. No teaching that uses Jesus to promote me. I can't, I can't look at teaching and think that it's okay because they use Jesus. No. Jesus gets used by false teachers. God gets used by false teachers. The Holy Spirit gets used by false teachers to backdoor teach you to look at yourself. And it's not hard to do in today's society because referencing the selfie, we're pretty darn focused on ourselves already. It's almost like we have to work at getting the attention off of ourselves from ourselves. It's like we almost have to remind ourselves this is not about us. This is all about Christ. No teaching that encourages happiness over joy in any and all circumstances. It's not about being happy. It's about abounding in thanksgiving and finding joy no matter what's happening in our life. And I want to reiterate, I've watched some people in our local church alone who have gone through some things, who are currently going through some things, who are finding joy in their struggle because they're tapping into their faith, allowing that to be their guide. How do we know that Jesus has the ability to provide complete fulfillment? 
That's almost the so what of this. We could say this, we could say that we're filled to the brim, but how do we really know that Jesus has the ability to provide complete fulfillment? Well, Paul says, who is the head of every rule and authority? The head of every rule and authority. Is the vice president the president? Does the vice president have the same power as the president? No. Jesus is creator of both man and spiritual beings. That's what this is telling us. Jesus rules over the entire universe which he created. We are reminded of this in Colossians 1 verse 16. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. You know who I want to be my guide? You know who I want to be my guide? The creator of both man and spiritual beating beings, the, the creator of the entire universe. That's who? Jesus. Think about what Christ suffered on the cross. Think about what he suffered on the cross. The beating leading up to the cross, being betrayed, physically beaten, beaten. Dying upon the cross. Think about what he suffered on the cross. Do you think he sought happiness in that moment? Because if he did, he would have been out. He would have never have fulfilled what God called him to do. He sought joy. He sought contentment in his calling. You don't know what tomorrow will throw at you. We don't know what's going to be thrown at us as we walk out these doors this morning. Fifteen minutes later, we don't know. Be comforted knowing you can be guided through it no matter what happens to you by the one who created and rules over his creation. That's faith that I can get behind. That's the type of faith that will cause me to not want to listen to teaching that promotes myself over Jesus Christ. And this is why we can easily say this. We're guided by our faith in Jesus Christ, who is God in human form. We are guided by our faith in Jesus Christ who is God in human form. Allow your faith in Jesus to be your guide because Jesus is God. The God who created you and sustains you. Heavenly Father, you are an awesome God. We can say you're awesome, but even, even in saying that you're awesome, you're beyond our comprehension of, of even wanting to say so. I'm so thankful that you have revealed yourself to us. I'm so thankful that, that our salvation has nothing to do with us trying to please you. I'm so thankful that you've given us the gift. You've, you've graced faith to us. What you're calling us to do, to fulfill the calling that you have for us, you've provided what's necessary. We are so thankful that that is possible because of Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching or listening to this teaching on demand from Friendship Grace Brethren Church. Please consider sending us an email at info at friendshipgracebrethren.com to let us know how this teaching may have helped you. Please also consider joining us in person at Friendship Grace Brethren Church, located at 10251 Metro Parkway, Suite 116, Fort Myers, Florida, just south of the intersection of Metro and Colonial Boulevard. Sunday school begins at 9 and worship service at 10 a.m. We look forward to seeing you in person at Friendship Grace Brethren Church.